What is going on Geeks Unite the Clans here back in your life and today we're going to be doing a little building. I wanted to start off with something simple. Um, I am constantly trying to come up with ideas for new builds. Sometimes I don't and sometimes I do. Um, but as I'm doing it I'm often sharing my ideas on my Discord with a bunch of the Patreon supporters and getting ideas. And I did one recently and the only response I got back and people, you know, should be, they shouldn't expect this from me but they were like it's a, it's a box, it's pretty boxy. So that got me thinking how often you kind of need to build boxes in Arc uh, for it to work. It's just a shape that makes sense. So very often you end up working with squares and you're just trying to add enough detail to make it not look boring, but to give yourself the space you need on the inside. So uh, when we're doing that, um, we have lots and lots of options. And I think that's what I want to show you guys today are the ways that you can go about um, making a box unique. So we have the beginnings of a box right there, two by four. Um, one thing I do a lot is uh, putting walls inside out. Now we have uh, these Adobe ones and uh, I think I first started doing this as sort of a Tudor style where I would paint the, the back light and paint the wood dark. But um, you have two ways of getting the, uh, the window to do that. You can put one here and then flip it with either E, triangle, or uh, why? But that actually changes the snap point and moves it off center. So we tend not to do it that way. And instead, what we will do is we'll place a ceiling here on the outside and then we'll snap this to that so that the back is facing. And when you remove that, it stays put. Um, so this is the really basic design so far. And you can see it's very much a box. Um, we'll go ahead and put, uh, oh, We'll go ahead and continue the ceilings around here and then we'll continue placing walls. And then I'm gonna show you a variety of uh, this exact house that we have already decked out. But before we get that far, I wanted to show you what we could do uh, and how we make the basic house. But on the sides here, I'm just gonna do all my walls inside out. All right, and it is still a box. It is now a three high box, and it's not your standard box. We did a stone on the bottom, adobe on top. It's already starting to look like something for a box, and you really only have to go one higher to fit a dino gate, which is four walls high. And we're gonna keep this fairly simple for now. Uh, just to show you guys the technique, you're gonna get the inside out sloped uh, adobe on the front and the back. We'll put one here and one here. All right, so that is the box, and we can take a look at several variations of the exact same box. So what we did, a uh, two by four stone foundation surrounded it in stone walls with the exception of one door frame, and then uh, a whole upside down or inside out uh, adobe house on top with windows on the front. We did that across the board with all of these. And you see, even as simple a box as that is, if you leave the roof up to uh, interpretation and you add a cool paint scheme, you can do many, many variations on that. We're actually going to take a look at them today. I'm going to adjust the sun so that it's right in front of us and I'll be right back. And there we go, guys. So we are back. Now, uh, I did this yesterday and uh, I talked about creative process. Some days I look at something, I do a bunch of work and I'm never happy enough to make a video out of it. So I don't a hundred percent remember all the paints that I did, but um, this is a standard sort of medieval building. And we added the thatch roof and we actually painted it olive green in order to enhance that sort of straw color to it. Uh, you could do the same with yellow, but the yellow is very, very bright. And then uh, right over here, this is white and uh, brown. Now, the only thing I always like to mention is with adobe walls, the wood over here receives paint differently. It does not. So if you paint this wood brown and this wood brown, they won't look the same. So I think I have maybe white and brown, sorry, white and mud here, white and brown on the sides. And that is the change we made. And then we have brown and slate as the two colors. I think it's brown on the foundations, slate on the walls, and the same olive right here. And we put no windows in, but that is a very simple version of it. And I kind of picture that being in like a medieval city um, that could fit right in. You could have a dozen buildings painted and designed in that style. And then all of a sudden your boxes aren't boring. Um, and on to this next one. So exact same materials, like I said, 
Everything except for the roof is identical. Um, this one we did a stone roof. It is painted forest green. And then on the walls, we have adobe. Uh, sorry, we have uh, olive as the back uh, color on the adobe here, here, and here. This is forest green. If my, oh no. Okay, so it's a little bit confusing. I think that's the f olive and that's forest green, but you kind of have to mix and match similar colors in order to get it to not look weird. You see how very different those two colors are? They might both be forest green now that I come to think of it. Anyway, uh, and then you've got uh, some more, I think, dark green paint down here, a little mud and uh, and uh, olive green on the door there, and window frames painted in tan and a sort of brown color. Those are the reinforced windows, and that is the same house, but made to look very, very different from the one right next to it. Um, I have three more of these. Let's keep going down the row. So all three of these first ones I, fit, uh, I pictured sort of fitting in in a medieval area, uh, because anything themed to look like that. Because this, this style of wall, when it's painted like that, when it's inside out, it doesn't look like it belongs in the desert necessarily. It looks like it belongs in a village or something to that effect. So what we did here is try and get a very different paint scheme. We have shades of yellow, shades of green. I wanted to get shades of red. So what you see here is actually silver on the stone on the bottom and on the stone walls to make it a little more bright than it typically would be. And then uh, you see Adobe window uh, and doors. And those are painted in red with a little bit of um, uh, the brick actually is the dark color there. And that matches up well with sort of a, a tan and mud color here. We have tan and brown on the sides or the other way around. I forget which is which. And then the roofs are adobe roofs. So these I have never painted uh, this color before. This is red. Uh, you could get away with the, the brick. It is just much, much darker. It's sort of like a dried blood color. This is bright and uh, it looks like, yeah, a whole village of these would be kind of cool. Uh, so that is another way to decorate it up. Main walls in either tan or parchment with the highlights in brown or uh, mud. Um, you could do the same effect over there, white and brown. You could do white and black. You could do any of the light colors sort of paired with any of the dark colors and you get that effect. You can do a full on color scheme like we did there. Or if you come over here, we have done the opposite. We've painted the adobe in a very dark color and we haven't even touched uh, the wood trim around there. So this is the fourth version. It has a wooden roof and it's painted in navy blue. And then to go with the navy blue, I thought we would want... Um, a brown color. So I believe that's mud on the background and I didn't paint any of the trim. You have a little bit of parchment and navy right there. <laughs> anyway, play with the different colors, play with the different paint schemes. You're going to get cool variations and you only find ones that work by trying five or six different variations. So if I, if you're a little frustrated that I can't remember exactly which colors are which, don't, you're going to have to try them all before you fall in love with something. So there you go. Navy blue there, I think. Yeah, I don't know what color's which. And then a last version. I wanted to try a greenhouse roof. The greenhouse roofs, to me, they always look good when you aim to paint them to look like metal, uh, when you want to make them look copper or silver or gold. And I was thinking copper with this version. That's actually orange paint. And then the whole house has been done in... Um, so the bottom, that's actually a navy blue on the foundations. But you see how different it is? Um, you could paint the walls slate and they would come closer to the foundations than they would, but the walls are also navy. And then we have greenhouse glass. This is a sky blue and orange combo, orange right here. And then the front of the house is sky blue and tangerine actually, is that right? Sky blue and orange. And then if you come over here, I think I did tangerine in order to get it to look lighter. Um, but there really is no perfect way to do it. The only thing I wanted to talk about, and this is going to be a fairly simple short video on roofing techniques, painting techniques, but the idea today with a simple video wanting to make the most of this goofy project I spent a few hours working on was to talk about how to turn a box into something other than a box. And I think with this very simple box-like design, which I'm sure anybody could build, um, we've made something fairly unique and we've made five fairly unique things. So that's actually going to be the whole video for today, guys. I'm going to keep it simple. And you let me know if you have color schemes that you love, combinations of materials. Like we have tried Adobe here with everything. Adobe with thatch, Adobe with stone, Adobe with Adobe, Adobe with wood, and Adobe with greenhouse glass. Whatever. Like you can do a billion different variations on this and you can slap paint on it and you're never going to have two that look identical. So 
Uh, that's all I wanted to talk about today. Make you guys think outside the box and maybe get a little more creative uh, with your next base build. That does it. I'm Unite the Clans Geeks. Thank you for watching this. Hit me up in the comments if you learned anything, if you have tips and tricks of your own, and we will see you in the next ARC building video.